welcome to the advisory it's deck. It's flies, not I'm not sorting away you, Troy. It's just oh, it's the, uh, I'm, I'm used to it. It's that time of year. The advisory deck on location for the final time this year. We've perhaps got one more episode to go after this before Christmas, but James and I thought it would be apt at this uh, wind up moment of the year to maybe just clock off a little mm. bit from the boardroom uh, to come up to what is a pretty specky uh, place with vistas over the gorgeous city that we live in here in Adelaide. Forgive the flies, they are friendly today. Uh, we've come up here to enjoy a cold one, to toast the end of a, uh, an interesting well, year. Opening, yeah. You can open it, Joe. Yes. Um, and maybe just reflect on reflection on the need for leaders of professionals in business all over to take a breath, to sit back despite the need of you know continuing to work hard in your business, but pause just momentarily, um, and for all that that brings and, and what that should be about. So. I don't think there's a, a business owner or a leader on the planet, James, and certainly not in Australia either, that has uh, had, a, had, a, had a run of the mill year. And so the need to pull back and just take a breath and think about and reflect on what you can take from this year, what that might mean for next year, pretty mm. critical, right? Mm. It's a year like no other. Cheers, cheers, cheers anyway. Great yeah. South Australian product, product placement, not sponsored by, but happy to be Happy to be sponsored by. We'll send, send uh, Glenn and Tim a... A snippet of the video, maybe, and you know, even even those who've had a good year have had a different year. Yeah. And I think I, I haven't had a conversation with people in the last few weeks when you start talking about Christmas and taking leave, uh, where where people haven't said, you know what, I'm, I'm I'm needing a break this year. Even if you've had a good year, people need a break. And I get the feeling the break's starting earlier. Yeah. Um, and maybe the, I don't know. Maybe the exception might be Melbourne, where they feel like they've been locked away for so long uh, that they want to get out and, and go and have meetings and do things. But the, the people I know who live in Melbourne who have moved from Adelaide or Sydney or Brisbane, um, you know, they're on the first flights out. They're, they're going off to see family. They're they're thinking about what does next year hold for them. Um, you know, they're, a lot of them are probably wondering are they going to be back in the office and or is, is working from home. Without lockdowns, the new normal, and there's so much going on. I mean, it's just such a, a bizarre year. Um, if you've survived it, then I think if you can get through this year, you can get through anything. And I think that that's that's a, a big takeaway. Just to go, hey, we've made it through. Everyone, everyone made it through with different battle scars. Uh, but if you made it through, then next year surely has to be better. And that's not a bad way to finish this year. I mean, you know, I think regardless of how tough, you know, COVID and 2020 has been on your business, on your state or whatever part of town or the country or the world you're in, you know, even those maybe more lightly touched by it than others, yep. there's still a great sense of tiredness and weariness mm. right now. And mm. I was talking to some creative folk the other day and we were just talking about how, you know, just, just the running hard and the stress and, and the need to focus so tactically and operationally isn't conducive to wonderful open-minded no. creativity and this is a moment in the year where we encourage people to think broadly and boldly and look out at sort of blue skies and green plains and think what could we do differently mm. in 2021 mm. and that's been really challenging but I also think that is kind of why it doubles down on the need to take that pause to really mm. find whatever it is that helps you recalibrate your own thinking to find some sort of a spark. What have we learned from the year that's gone? And, and what could be? What could yeah. we kind of start connecting some dots on as well? Mm. And it, it's, hard, it's hard to think about what could be if you're in the same environment trying to be blue sky, mm. uh, that you've spent the last X number of months being incredibly busy or trying to be busy, uh, even if that busy hasn't been productive or, or financially viable. Um, I think humans are very good at being busy, yeah. and, and especially if you're if you're the boss, if you're an executive, if you're the shareholder, whatever it might be, and you're trying to find a way through, and um, you don't sit at home and just say, "Oh, someone else will take care of it," uh, and they're the people that you and I deal with all the time, right? And it's been incredibly stressful if you're trying to figure out how do you keep your payroll going, how do you keep your supply chains going, um, and to do that. And that, that doesn't stop Christmas, you know, if you're a business owner, um, just because it's Christmas time doesn't mean you stop thinking about how to do everything. But to try and to try and sit in the office and go, how do we make next year an improvement? Uh, when you're surrounded by the same challenges and the, the mindset, the physical environment that you are, the 
the normal days, I think is really tough. And that's that's why, as I said before, we've come here. Um, it means you have a different conversation. We've done, I'm not sure how many videos this year, you would know. 26? Uh, I don't think we've had, I don't know, we've had one drink. We were Amber. Uh, we've had one drink in Amber, but that was, that was uh, because, because of the product. Um, we've had different conversations in the last 20 minutes sitting here. And when we finish this, we'll have a different conversation again. And that, I think that's the importance that people need to get out, even if it's with their team, just get out of the office and, and think, let's put this year behind us. The good and the bad, the learnings. Yeah. Um, but get out of the office and give yourself permission to go and have some, some time away. Uh, and then think, right, how can we do it differently next year? Um, all, all those things we don't want to harp on about the strategy stuff we've done and that and the different conversations there. Um, but next year will be different. We've had the first COVID in injection vaccine performed earlier this week. Um, the second one went on William Shakespeare. He's alive, apparently. Yeah, so, well, he, there you he, go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. The part. He, he looked pretty good. Um, well, William Shakespeare got the second one. Uh, next year will be different. Yeah, the, the planes are back in the sky. The, the hotel quarantine programs are back on. Um, people are coming back to Australia. We are unfortunately, we are saying on the way up the hill, we're having trade wars with China that um, due to it's going to hurt a lot of businesses around the, around Australia. Uh, and you can't sit back from that over Christmas and go, oh, that'll be okay. Well, you know, that'll take care of itself. Yeah. But you need to get out of the office, ideally, and breathe some air. I think you're right. I think, well, I think that's healthy for us as humans, as leaders, and as businesses who need to put their mask on ourselves. But I also think it's a wonderful catalyst for ideation, putting yourself in different places, mm. putting yourself in different thinking spaces, probably even around different people, as challenging and testy as the family can get around Christmas time. Um, you know, that's the moment when you start seeing things and connecting dots in slightly different ways, where you've got that pause point to just go, I was so busy running through 2020 to keep the lights on and, and try and gain whatever momentum we could. I didn't even realise that if I put that together and that observation, there's an insight that might help the business. So I think, again, you know, kind of, I don't want to get too woo woo about it, but kind of letting the universe talk to you a little bit, right? Oh, I'm, as, as you're talking, I'm sitting here thinking. It's off with the pixies, it's only at one. No, no, we, <laughs> just, just that. that. Troy and I talk, we have these ideas that come into us about different different things that could be done. Um, and uh, trying to figure out, you know, from, from that loneliness of the, the solopreneur, uh, the, the solo business owner, um, is often you just don't, don't know where to start right, with, that, with those conversations, uh, which is what the swarm's about. And uh, Troy can talk about the swarm separately, but I think that, that challenge for the 94% of businesses in Australia that, that have one shareholder a family that's the, the owner uh, and less than five employees and they're the ones that are the backbone of the Australian economy um, uh, they're the ones that have done it hardest this year so many of them haven't been able to get job keeper because they haven't paid themselves a wage because they're not employees they, you know, they, they make the money off the profit of the business um, they're the ones that try to keep people in you know, they going uh, they, they've worn it harder than anyone else and they're often the ones that don't get the opportunity of having that team around them uh, and I think they're probably the ones that need it the most. So if you're a, if you're a solo business owner, and especially if it's a husband and wife or, or parent and child, and it's you know a very close dynamic, um, I really think having that chance to just say, take a day out on a, on a weekday, uh, the business survived until now, the business can survive the day where you almost can close the doors and say, don't do it on a weekend, it should be family time. Um, go and climb the hill for a few hours in the afternoon. Take a friend who's got a business and just go, Right, let's have a, have a chat and figure out next year, how do I do it differently, how do I survive again? Because otherwise you get to the end of January and you go, I feel like I haven't had a break. Um, and you, you can't go through a year like this, it's just been training, and expect to keep on going through next year. That would be the worst thing for me to do, it would just be horrible. It just doesn't work. And, and, and I think your point is bang on. Even if it's a case of saying, look, you know, we're head down, bum up in our business all the time, but I'm going to take half a day. I'm going to grab two key suppliers or a key customer or a colleague or, yeah. you know, someone someone else and say, let's just go and have a coffee and a, and a, and a schnitty or mm. a beer. Or, and, and, and you take some time out and just, just riff and debrief and yeah. talk about what we've learned because it's those moments, those sort of, I didn't realise just how tightly wound I was actually becoming. Um, and, and, and that's just letting, I 
like acid butyl room for sort of stuff to creep in. So if you haven't done it yet, you know, this this is you know time to book some coffees. Coffee shops are open yeah. and they want your support, right? So let's book a few now. That's a wonderful start. Practical. I guess the other. Sorry, you go. I just going. I think I think doing that is good. Um, I'd say do that. My, my, my two suggestions: do that without any objective apart from yes. just to have a conversation yeah. and, and that might be the, the one over a, a beer or a glass of wine you just go and unwind and just have a chat with someone who's been through some similar stuff and just go I just I think humans feel better talking and so you go and, go and share something without any expectations of making your business better I'd say do a, sec- a second one which might be over the coffee go and have, have an objective a different conversation with someone yeah. So I'm just looking for something I can do to make my business better next year. It might be you know, to, to cut a cost somewhere, a, a different marketing campaign. Maybe it's a, something as simple as a, an app that can make it easier if you're the, you know, the owner who's responsible for social media or writing a newsletter. So now what can I do to make that process easier? Because I, I know I need to do it, uh, but I find that really draining. And I find the hours I spend trying to do it draining and I, I haven't got the $3,000 a year to pay someone to do it for me. Um, and somebody might say, well, there's an app that is an artificial intelligence app, which there is, and I'll talk to Swarm about that later, which does copywriting for you, and it's actually pretty cool. Um, it doesn't replace a good copywriter, but if you're doing work yourself, there's so many things now that you can do from technology's point of view that might just save you one or two hours a week. Yeah. Uh, and that one or two hours a week means you can either get home earlier, um, or more importantly, maybe, um, you might be able to go and see that customer you haven't thought about for a while you can do more of the sales that generate the revenue so i I think i'd say have have the beer conversation the wine conversation or the non-alcoholic version which is probably better for your health um and talk talk about stuff that's just good good for the soul have a separate one about the business uh, and that might just help you set up for next year and go okay there are things i can do to help me improve i think it makes great sense and i guess i'd just add to that you know, one of the things that will help you feel better about going in and giving yourself a breathing space, though the worries of your own business or leading the team never necessarily fully leave you, book in the date in January, whatever that looks like, a morning, you know, regrouping session with the team, a little planning, you know, half day or day. Yeah, yeah. Book January the 14th or mm. Uh, if that's locked in, then you've kind of given yourself that window to say, I want to kind of let the universe speak to me. I want to be able to come to that fresh, clean, clear, yeah, yeah. ready for the new mm. year. And it's almost then that's the thing that sheds the load to some degree from your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. However you choose to do it, um, you know, <laughs> leverage the support that's around you. Seek out supporters. We've got a bunch of great supporters who in early 2021 would, of course, love to to offer some value and to help you. Um, we're taking our own medicine as well. We're mm. gonna take some time um, yep. and um, sit back and enjoy vistas like this uh, and hopefully not too many of these. Well, well that's Christmas, the calories are only half, I believe. But um, we will probably have one more of these advisory decks before the year wraps up with a, a few ideas from around the strategy road swarm and I'll give you some more insight into them. But James, as always, a uh, pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your insights. Thanks for bringing me up the hill. It's um, not a bad way to finish the afternoon. It's not. Merry Christmas. Cheers to you. Um, And thanks once more for joining us on The Advisory Deck.